Hey there, it's Carrie, and welcome back into the Integrative Health Simplified podcast. We are in the series Women, Women's Health Fact or Fiction, and we're on to this episode all about what you can expect after 35. Is it all downhill? <laughs> because that's what we hear. But I do want to take some time in this episode just to talk about what is normal with aging and maybe what is just really fiction that that we've maybe heard or that um we might just have in our mind of these these are the things that happen as we age but honestly it's not necessarily just from aging so let's let's talk about a few of these and i would love to know your thoughts on them so as always with this conversation or with any topic that we bring up um, that we're talking about on the podcast, I would love for you to email me or just tag me on social media with your thoughts or send me a DM. I would love to continue the conversation. So you can always find those links and more in the description of this video, or if you're listening to the podcast, of course, in the show notes. So let's talk about the first thing. Um, and this is one that we often think about when, as we age, and that's hormonal shifts. And that is very common and, and very normal. I shouldn't say common. It is normal <laughs> as you age to have hormonal shifts. Once we hit about 35 to 40, we can definitely start experiencing some of these hormonal shifts, but everybody is a little bit different. So I definitely don't want to say it's, it's just one age range, but it just makes sense as we get out of those childbearing years, our hormones are going to shift because our body with our menstrual cycle is very, um, it's very in tune with pregnancy, right? That's one of the things that our bodies as women are made to do is get pregnant. And so our cycle has a lot to do with that even though we might not want to get pregnant, right? It's still, that's what one of its purposes is. And so as we move out of maybe the childbearing years, 20s and 30s, I'll just kind of lump that together. Once we hit the 40s, we can experience some some hormonal shifts and that is very normal. Things like progesterone and estrogen and testosterone, um, even your thyroid um, can change a little bit. Um, and also insulin and leptin, those are all hormones that can change and shift over time and that, that will. So as we age, our progesterone decreases. That's kind of the first thing that decreases, um, typically because we're ovulating less as our cycle kind of slows down and then comes to a halt during menopause, those things will slowly decrease. That is very normal. That is, that's what should happen. And, um, after our progesterone decreases, ultimately our estrogen will decrease one to two years before true menopause or our last period cycle. And so that is something that we should all, you know, expect to, to see. Um, and that can be experienced in changes, of course, in our cycle, but also changes in our mood, changes in um, our, our libido. There's a lot of things that are linked to that. But what I typically hear is um, sometimes women can experience a lot of like, you know, severe ups and downs. And, and I guess maybe some, the best way to say it is some of these things that are normal, people will experience in greater effect, right? And so I will say that is not normal to experiencing, to be experiencing such high and low shifts with our mood and with, you know, some of the cramps maybe associated with a cycle, things like that that is not normal. And so I think sometimes we we have in our back of our head, of course, we know that our hormones are going to shift after, as we get older. That just makes sense. However, sometimes the severity in the way that they shift, that is not normal. It is very common, but that's not normal. And so a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about are linked to one important hormone, and that is cortisol. That is the stress hormone. And if you've listened to any of my episodes or heard me, you know, you follow me on Instagram or YouTube or whatnot, you've heard me talk about stress because it is so important because it affects so many different things. Cortisol is a hormone. It's a stress hormone. And so, of course, it would make sense why it would affect your other hormones. And so it can definitely um, affect your blood sugar, which can also affect your mood, um, which it can affect um, your how your body 
processes the food that you eat, how your body responds to daily stressors. Um, it can affect a ton of different things. And so I think oftentimes is this one hormone in particular cortisol, which isn't necessarily, I think it does get demonized. It isn't necessarily a terrible hormone. It's just the fact that we have so much of it and it kind of really has this ripple effect that affects a ton of different things in our body. Of course, one being the other hormones in the endocrine system. And so that is one thing that if we can look to manage our stress, fuel our body properly, all of those things can help tremendously as we move in to the 40, 45, 50, when we will probably go through some of those hormonal shifts, it makes it a million times better to go through that process versus it already being out of balance, right? Our, our body may be having a lot of excess cortisol and it's already throwing off all of these hormones. And then the, the natural progression is that they change. Anyway, it's just going to make it worse is, is what that means in a nutshell. So cortisol is a really big key. In what I'm going to just kind of say is like aging gracefully, right? We're going through these shifts, but they're just not nearly as bad as they could be if we can really give our body really good support through those years. That's the key. So that's one thing that you can expect after 35 or 40 would be hormonal shifts, of course. Next would be decreased collagen production. That's pretty normal, especially not even at 35. I mean, you can expect that a little bit earlier, 25, 30, your body is going to be producing less cortisol. Now, I'm sorry, I was thinking about the last thing we talked about, less collagen. So one of the things that can really affect how much collagen your body produces is actually excessive cortisol. So I know we're kind of harping on this one thing, cortisol, but that can really affect how your body ages. And I think it's, that's an important thing to note throughout this entire conversation is that there are things that we can control that then affect how we age, but, but not taking some of these steps and not, you know, maybe understanding this process. This is how you start to age a lot quicker and you go through these um, normal aging processes and they're just a lot harder on your body because your body is already out of whack going into, you know, 35, 40, 45, 50, as we do go through some of these changes as we age. So hopefully that makes sense um, as, as, and just explaining it that way. But excessive cortisol can hinder even more the um, collagen production, which of course goes into how your skin looks, the smoothness, the firmness, just um, the the texture even. And of course that can affect um, other things like your hair and your nails and, and all of those types of things. And so that is something that um, you can expect with age. However, it can be sort of um, managed as you manage cortisol, the excessive cortisol in your body. Another thing that happens as we age is muscle loss. So after about the age of 30, you begin to lose about around three to 5% per decade of muscle. That's just kind of, I guess, the normal aging process. However, you know, things like um, under eating, overworking um, your muscles, especially something like cardio, that can intensify this muscle loss that is normal. It can actually intensify that. And specifically under eating, because again, you can go back and listen to the episode that I did on why it's so important just to eat breakfast. I talk about it in, in that episode because <clears throat> again, starting off your day can blunt some of these cortisol effects on your body that have all of these ripple effects that we're talking about. But just thinking about specifically muscle, so when we um, under eat, when we don't give our body the fuel that it wants, which is food, then it can make its own energy, but it has to do that through a process that requires stress hormones, and it also breaks down your muscle. So that's why I'm saying this says uh, under eating can have a really, really big effect on how your body utilizes the muscle that it already has. So that's one thing that can happen. And also... If you're not proactive with this, right, if you're not strength training, if you're doing a lot of cardio or if you're just sedentary, um, I think that either one of those things can really lead to more, even more muscle loss. And you have to think about your metabolic rate and, you know, the amount of muscle that you have. Muscle does burn a lot more fat than, um, you know, 
than fat. So I think that's something that you just to consider as you age is to add in strength training to your, you know, your weekly schedule. And um, I love just the idea of walking and weights. I think walking can be extremely, extremely good for us, even though we think we need to go on a, you know, on a run, walking can be extremely helpful in just getting outside and getting more into that parasympathetic nervous system, which we desperately need to do. And then adding in some weights a few times a week, that can be a really, really good balance of um, when you know, we're getting outside, we're getting in nature, but we're also building up that muscle, which we are going to just naturally lose easier and faster as we age. Um, Again, this is something that happens naturally. However, there are things that we can do to be proactive. And also super, super key, I already mentioned eating enough, but eating enough protein, specifically whole food animal protein, really key in combating muscle loss. And just, of course, you know, we need protein to build muscle. So if you're strength training, you need to make sure you pair that with enough protein for so many different reasons. <laughs> That's a whole other podcast episode in itself. But really key there. So muscle loss is, is something that you can expect to happen. However, there are so many things that you can do to combat this and really support your body as it ages. Of course, there's bone loss. We hear about that one also. This is really key, um, especially for females. Um, and so what one thing that is not necessarily mentioned here, this does kind of go along with muscle loss. I think, you know, you can kind of think about building muscle. It can help strengthen your bones, of course, but also working on mineral balance is super, super key here. And so there, you know, all the minerals are, are just so interconnected. It's like this huge web. And so calcium, of course, we always think about calcium and strong bones, but there's so much more than just calcium. And so working to ensure mineral balance is really key. I have a lot of different podcast episodes and informational posts on Instagram about um, mineral balance. And so check out some of those if you, um, you know, that's one thing that I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients on is mineral balance because it is so, so key in just creating a really strong foundation so that your body does age well and can perform like it wants to, right? It has all of the nutrients that it needs to do what it wants to do. So that's another really key thing here. And then last but not least is something called NAD plus. And this is, this is a really kind of a long name too. <laughs> so I'm not going to try to pronounce it. It's, it stands um, for something you can, I'll, I will include that in the show notes if you want to um, look that up, but it's an essential molecule that's involved in various metabolic reactions. And so if you think about your metabolism and all that entails, um, the NAD is something that really fuels that, one of the factors, right? And so as we age, probably from about 20, 25 to 30, it really starts to decrease. And so this can help, um, this can, sorry, hinder your cells to produce enough energy. And so again, this kind of goes along with your metabolism and how it sort of um, it does decrease somewhat with age. However, again, there are some things that we can really do to help with this. And one of the things that I've started um, incorporating into my daily routine for about 10 months now is NMN, which is a precursor to NAD+. And so this just helps your body to produce this essential molecule that does help with your metabolism. And so that is something that's been really, really key for me. Um, I have used it in the form of this product called um, MetaPower Advantage. It's actually something we already talked about, collagen. It, it combines collagen and a lot of the cofactors that collagen needs to um, be bioavailable to your body so that your body can actually use it. And it also has NMN in here also to just help as a whole to help support some of the collagen in your body and also help to support your metabolism as a whole. And I've, I've seen it's, it's been a game changer for me. And so I'm going to put information about that in the show notes and in the description of this video as well. But just in closing, one of the things that we hear a ton about is our metabolism as we age, you know, or maybe really even just speaking about the 35 to 40 range, as we hit that, that age, our metabolism, it, it just seems like we hear that it just conks out, right? We don't have one. And so therefore we might gain weight. We might have sleeping issues. We might have hair loss. We might have, 
you know, hormonal shifts, like all of those things kind of seem to be related to just your metabolism, just going flat. But as you've seen and, and heard me uh, talk about some of these things in this episode, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. While of course your metabolic rate does slow down somewhat, all of the things that I mentioned are ways that you can help support your body's metabolism as a whole so that it is robust for your age, right? Yes, we can't go back necessarily. However, we can just age in a way that is going to support the things that are naturally going to happen and we're going to age well. I think that should be our goal rather than like trying to be 20 or something, right? I'm a 40 year old. I don't necessarily think, oh, I want to be the same as I was when I'm 20. I just want to have energy and I want to um, feel good and um, show up every day and do what God has called me to do and you know, take care of my family and, and be excited about that, right? That's kind of my goals. And so this conversation, I hope helps you to just have a good understanding of what's, yes, this, these are natural things that are going to happen as we age. However, here are some things that we can do that really help to combat some of these things that naturally occur as we get older. And so I really enjoy this, this conversation because I think that there are a lot of inaccuracies out there. Um, and I think that it can just be really deflating. And so, you know, when you hear everything goes down here after 50, sorry, after 35, then that just kind of, uh, makes you to where you're like, well, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to go with the flow and just, it is what it is. And I think there are some things that we can do that make a huge difference. And so I hope that you see that um, and have learned more about that in this episode. And so stick around. Um, I've got several more episodes in this series to help to give you some clarity in women's health and, um, and dispel some of those uh, things that aren't necessarily true so that you can have a really good idea about how you can support yourself as you continue to age. As I was mentioning at the very first of this episode, I always want to continue the conversation and really encourage you to do that. So um, check out the description of this video or the show notes to um, get, get information how you can get in touch with me. If you have a question or you want to share some thoughts or whatnot, I would love to hear from you. See you guys on the next episode.